to be using curl today. Well, we're going to start with curl today. Um, so what is curl? It's basically a command line tool that allows you to transfer a URL. So you're like sending URLs and sending any sort of data to a URL and getting data back. It's pretty straightforward. Here's some other kinds of like protocols if you want to read like a bunch of different ones about them. Um, yeah, so let's do a curl command here. Hopefully all y'all are following along. Um, also, do all of y'all have GitHub accounts? I hope so. If you don't, you should make one immediately. All right? So, let's try hitting the GitHub API. If you don't have a GitHub account and you just don't want to admit it, you can use mine right now, even though the data will be less interesting than seeing your own. Um, if you need to install curl, do that. You don't curl? What? It's not inside. Just set up this machine. I don't. I don't. I think it is installed by default on the VM. If that's what you're using. If not, you know, sudo apt get install curl will solve all of your problems. There you go. All right. So, let's see what this spits out. Oh, sweet data. All right. So, what is all this data? Um, pretty straightforward, you know, login information. It's all public data because we didn't actually authenticate at any point here. You can see, you know, my name, my email address, a bunch of other stuff. Um, and this is all in JSON, which we'll be discussing more later. But that's the type of format that all this data is uh, presented in. Um, yeah, so let's try something a little different. Let's do the same guy, but add a verbose flag. So, all right, so here's a bunch of like, handshake stuff at the top, and then we get into the, the fun stuff. So the arrows that are pointing like towards the words is the request that we sent to the GitHub API, and the arrows that are pointing like away from the screen are the response that we received back. So on the first line, you see that we did a git request, right? So that's the most basic type of request, and there are a lot of other types of requests, and uh, they're like HTTP layers is what they're generally referred to as. And this, the examples that I'm going to go over and explain this is mainly for a RESTful API, if anyone uh, is going to like point out a little fault. Um, yeah, so again, it's what we just did. Pretty straightforward, you just kind of ping the server and you get stuff back. A point command will create or update data. So say that I, the dash capital XY is the type of request that you're trying to send. So obviously we have a put and the dash D is just data. So we're sending text and stuff to a URL, which I did not specify in this specific request. Um, so yeah, this will put that data onto the server. So if you wanted to delete a client named Joe, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We would just hit the URL endpoint that we wanted to delete and that's how it works. And a post is Similar to a put, and that it can also be used to create and update data, but um, you cannot use a new uh, endpoint. So you can only use an endpoint that has been made already. It's kind of confusing and ridiculous, but basically you would hit this endpoint, and at that endpoint it would have like a factory or something that would make a new data type. So you would hit that endpoint and presumably send more data and be like, hey, create a user named Jane, and here's all of her data, and then it would create it. So, uh, people argue a lot about put and post and which one is better to use when, and it's a giant mess. Um, so, yeah. That's for sure. All right. Um, so, let's get back to the response that we got back. Uh, the first line of that is a 200 OK. So, that's obviously good. We hit the endpoint, and nothing bad happened. So. What does the 200 mean? Why is it 200? Well, there's a lot of standardized response codes in HTTP. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen like 404 and not found when you go to a website that's not there anymore. Um, they're all pretty straightforward. So created would be like if you hit a put request and then it came back and was like, hey, you created a new client, congratulations. Um, moved is when it has been moved permanently, uh, like the endpoint has been moved permanently. Uh, bad request is basically if you send bad data, it's usually what that means. Unauthorized, you haven't you know, signed in or whatever you need to do, and then just internal server errors. Pretty straightforward. Alright. Um, 
going to kind of skip around here in the rest of the response. Um, we've got the server that we hit, obviously, today's date. And then the last modified date is, um, that'll tell you, obviously, the last time it was modified. And this is used for like browsers and caching and stuff. So if the cache has not been modified and the last modified date is more current than the cache, then it'll like re-retrieve the website and update the cache. Um, yeah, so Jackie, content, yeah? Is there a way to get it to just, so we actually got the content when you ran this curl. Can we get curl to like just send us the last modified date? Because we need to like ask it for the last modified date and then do a second request to actually get the data. Yeah, that's how, that's how browsers usually do it. I don't know the actual command. But okay. Browsers often hit it and just give the header back okay. before actually fetching the entire website to make sure that it, is, it doesn't, can't just pull it from the cache. Oh, a quick question about the HTTP response. Like if your IP got blocked, like what, what the status should be? Uh, it'll probably return like a four. Yeah, probably like a four or four error. It might return a five hundred error too. You can, if you get onto Wikipedia, there's a nice list of. Oh, I mean, that's just yeah. like a. That, that's just a few of the errors. Okay. There's errors for basically everything, and I don't yeah. know, but there is like an access denied error and stuff like that. Okay. So it might use something like that. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the fourth line is content type. So obviously we were receiving JSON. Uh, from GitHub, but you can also receive like XML or any sort of media also, not any sort of media, but like GIF images, so it would be like image slash GIF or like an MP4 or any kind of stuff like that. Um, it's called a MIME type, M-I-M-E, so if you wanted to like Google that and see like a bunch of different types that you can send or receive, you can do that. Um, yeah, so connection keep live, so that'll basically just keep the connection alive. So the alternative to this is closing the connection. So it basically just cuts down on handshake overhead. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I think that was all I wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, so what are these X rate limit guys? They look kind of suspicious. So GitHub specifically has a limit to the amount of times so that you can hit their API. Uh, I'm not signed in. The, if you're if you're authenticated, then the limit is like 5,000. But if you're not, then it's 60. Um, obviously, I've hit it twice in the last hour uh, on the last two curls that we just did. Um, yeah, so that's GitHub specific, and it basically prevents people from like spamming the API and getting a bunch of like crazy data. Um, oh, another super important one is content link. That's the one at the very bottom. So if you're, say, like you hit an API and you're trying, trying to stream the data back, it's really good to know how much data you should be expecting to receive if you want to have like a loading bar or something like that. It's very useful. Um, so let's try, uh, let's just the data we got back. We already saw that earlier. Um, let's try <coughs> another curl. This time we're going to use dash i. So that'll just show the response header. So now we're going to hit the rate limit endpoint. So what this is going to do is send us the rate limit. And uh, luckily for us, this command, when we hit this endpoint, it doesn't count against us in our limit. So we can hit this command all day long, and it wouldn't the remaining wouldn't go down. Uh, so GitHub is further that way sometimes. All right, so we still got JSON back here. So now. What exactly is JSON? Is there any questions right now? Or anything that we've covered? Is that limited in seconds? Or? It's the number of times you hit it. The number okay. of times you hit an endpoint. So what happens if you get to zero? Then you're done. I don't actually know. I haven't tried it. <laughs> I mean, it must reset at some point, right? Every hour. Yeah, just okay. the amount every hour. Okay. Okay. So we'll just refuse the request. Yeah, probably we'll just send back like a error. One of the codes that I showed you earlier. So back one of these, probably like I don't actually know which one. It would send back something bad. Um, yeah. So 